All right, here we are, video two of linear regression. We are on step four, and this is the one that's probably the most, eh, it's not difficult, but it's a little bit um, particular. So we are gonna evaluate the three key values that were given in linear regression, the slope, the y-intercept, and the correlation. Uh, we are not gonna worry about interpreting this. You will in AP Stats, but you don't have to here. So correlation, that's this number down here, right here. Again, it gives us three key pieces of information. One, it gives us the direction of our relationship, and that's either positive or negative. It tells us the strength, and this is a numeric value of it, so this is moderate at best. Um, if we're at 0 0.8 and above, it's considered strong, and the closer you get to 1 or negative 1, the stronger it is. So you can change this modifier um, as you see fit based on this value as it gets closer and closer to one or negative one. And then we talk about the form and we felt like it was linear enough. It wasn't, it didn't look like this basically. It didn't have an exponential shape to it. Um, uh, it didn't have any other kind of curvature to it. So we're gonna go ahead and use linear. So this would be a way to interpret it. Notice that's three things we're talking about. The direction, whether it's positive or negative, how strong it is in terms of its strength, and that it's linear. And if it wasn't linear, then we probably wouldn't even be here uh, at this point talking about it. So based on that, um, I would say that the correlation of 0.638 indicates a positive, moderately strong linear association between the height of females in these IB classes and their shoe size. So this is putting it into context of the situation, which is the relationship between the height and the shoe size. Um, again, this is just our fantastic equation down here because the next thing we're going to talk about is the slope. And again, this A value is the slope, which was 0.2376, or in our equation, it's that guy right there. So you want to make sure you're talking about the right number, and that number should work its way into the uh, description or explanation. And when we talk about slope, remember, if you think back to the graph, this line did not hit every single data point, and we would be, it would be weird if it did. So we're going to talk about this in terms of this is a predictive model. It is not exact. It is not a perfect prediction. So we have to talk about this in terms of um, uh, predicting and averages. We can't claim it's going to be a fact. So we talk about it by increasing whatever this is by one unit. So if we increase that by one, what happens is my output will be increased by this amount. So that's why this wording says for every additional inch, this is my units for my x value. Um, those are my x units. So for every additional inch in height, our model will predict an increase because it is a positive slope in shoe size by about 0.2376 sizes on average. Now, if you left off this word predict and or these words on average, <clears throat> you would be lying because your model is not guaranteeing that every inch taller someone's shoe size goes up by 0.2376. It is a predictive estimate. So you have to have some kind of language in there indicating that it's not precise. Um, so again, for every additional unit, every one unit of your X variable, your model will predict either an increase or decrease, depending on whether this is positive or negative, in the uh, shoe size, which is my output or predictive uh, predictor, my Y variable. And then you actually put your slope in here with units. It also is not a coincidence that the slope is positive and the correlation is positive. When the slope is negative, the correlation will be negative. And now we're going to talk about the y-intercept, which again is this b value, which in our case was this number right here. And the y-intercept in any equation, in any function really, is when x equals 0. And that's, what you, that's always what the y-intercept is. So for us, in this situation, a y-intercept would be when this was a 0. And if this is a 0, that would be gone. And 0 in this case is indicating someone that has no height or is 0 inches tall. So if, if I have to do this, I just do it. If a female in these IB classes had no height, aka they were zero inches tall, our model would predict a shoe size for that individual of negative 7.965. Does that make sense? The answer is no, it does not. And sometimes the y-intercept will not make sense. And if you remember our graph, um, 
it was over here, it was like at, at a height of 58 inches. So as you kept going down to get a height of zero, this is predicting you'd have a negative shoe size. Impossible, also impossible to have a height of zero because the minute you are born, you actually have a height greater than zero. So sometimes the y-intercept makes sense in context and sometimes it doesn't, but you still always pre uh, interpret it in terms of your x value being zero. In this case, it would be no height or zero inches. All right, so here is an additional uh, free piece of information that you uh, can do with what you want, but if you have a regression line, and this is our regression line, the actual mean of your x variable and the mean of your y variable will actually be a point on that regression line every single time. So this is our heights and this is our shoe size. And so if I averaged all those females' heights and all of those females' shoe sizes, that uh, point would actually be right on top of your regression line. And I, I ran two variable stats to show you I wasn't lying. And you can do two variable stats in your calculator. If you go to uh, stat calculate, you'll notice that it's two variable stats is right below one variable stats. And you just put in the two different lists that you're running and it will calculate both uh, sets of, of values for your um, two variables. So my X bar was my height 65.029 and my Y bar is the average for the shoe size which is 7.48. So each of these each of these variables the heights and the shoe size both have their own distributions. That's what we've been talking about before today. Now we're putting those together. They still each individually would have their own distribution. This is what you look like when you pair them. But what I did is I took this 65.0293 and I plugged it into my regression equation and it gave me an output of 7.48. There it is. That is your Y bar or your Y average. So this is just showing you that X bar, Y bar, that point is on every regression line. Um, it's on the model itself. All right, now we're going to actually jump back to step five. We're away from the free information. This is the stuff you pay for. So we're going to use our model to make a prediction. So I want to know, all right, um, and I look back and there were no girls that were uh, females that were 70 inches uh, high tall so I'm going to use that to make my prediction because I don't have an actual output value and again if I went back to my graph to do this which is right here um, this is X bar of 65 so if I went uh, over a little bit more to the right to 70 I'm looking for where on this line the shoe size would be for a female who was 70 inches tall but it's a lot easier to use an actual equation. So I'm going to take this 70 and I'm going to plug it in right there for X. And I'm going to put it right there for X into my equation and make a calculation. Um, and when I put that 70 in, I will multiply it by the slope. And then I will subtract 7.965 from it. And it will give me my actual answer, which is 8.66. So that is the predicted shoe size of a 70 inch female uh, from these IB class data sets. So a shoe size of 8.66, which again isn't an actual shoe size, but it gives you an idea about generally where it would be. Uh, I used my table to find that actual value instead of plugging it in, just so you know you can always go to your table in your calculator, which is um, right here. Uh, there it is. Wait, where? There it is. Table right there. So if you go second table, you can pull up your table and it'll give you your output values for any input. You can choose an input and uh, find an actual output for it. It's very quick, just so you know that's another option. But you can also just type this into your calculator and hit enter and it gets you your answer. All right, so now we're going to do that again. We're going to predict the shoe size for someone with a height of 20 inches. And so we would take that 20 inches. And remember, we're always plugging, uh, uh, we're always making a prediction by plugging in our explanatory variable. It doesn't work the other way. It does not work the other way. That's a no-no. So we're going to put 20 in and we're going to calculate. Um, and what? We get a shoe size of negative 3.213. That's even more ridiculous than this y-intercept, really, because I actually put in a height of 20 inches and I get out a negative shoe size, which means you would have somehow your feet would be in the fourth or fifth dimension and not be uh, really underneath you, difficult to walk. So very strange. And what happened is something called extrapolation. And you have to be very aware of extrapolation. 
And it's any time you plug in um, an X value that lies outside of your original data set. So notice our data set, um, I think that the shortest female was around 59 inches. And so that's like over here, that's 59 inches. And we use 20 inches, which is way over here. And I honestly don't know what happens after this on the right and this on the left. I cannot assume that this model continues in a perfectly linear fashion in both directions. Um, and this is uh, what happens. You get a really whacked out uh, output. So you've got to be very careful with extrapolation. And that's very important to keep in mind. My 70 inches was right in the right about here, which is right on the boundary of it. But it's still within reason to assume that my model is going to do a decent job predicting it there. So you got to be careful with that. It also leads me to one other um, point that I should have had in these notes and I didn't. Um, and that is the very important piece of information that correlation, which is what we've been talking about in terms of the strength, uh, does not imply causation, which means um, I cannot say that the height is what's causing the shoe size at all. I can imply that there's a relationship but I cannot indicate that they are causing it to happen. That is a no-no. So correlation does not imply causation. It just appears to make a relationship happen. All right, so now you're going to try. Um, you're going to try it with the data on the males from those same two classes. And you are going to do all five steps. Uh, you're going to plot it. You're going to look at it, make sure it's straight. You're going to do linear regression. You're going to evaluate the three key values that are given with linear regression, and then you're going to use your model to predict uh, the shoe size of a male that is 67 inches. So here is your data, and I will move it so you can actually see it. There you go. Now you can see it. And you're going to pause the video, and you're going to put all that data into your calculator. And again, this I had to split this into two. These are This is list one, and guess what? This continues to be list one. These are list two. These continue to be list two. So the thing to keep in mind, this is paired data. So uh, right next to the 70 has to be that 10. Next to the 68 has to be that 10. So these have to be right next to each other in your calculator. And you have to have the same number of pieces of data or you'll get a dimension mismatch. So pause this thing, put this in your calculator, and do the five key steps down here. You can see what they are. So you can uh, do them all. And then you can check your answer. So pause. Mm. All right, now you're done. I'm assuming that took a couple minutes. Fair enough. Here is the scatter plot and the output from your regression uh, model. And if yours is different than mine, that means one of us put in a piece of data wrong. And it can happen. It's very easy to happen. So that can throw stuff off. I also wanted to point out that this piece of data right here, I would consider an outlier because it is far removed um, from the rest of this pattern. Like this pattern makes a very nice, very much better uh, looking in strength than the females uh, data. But this guy over here messes that up a little bit and makes it a little bit less, uh, less strong, if you will. And so if I were to try to fit a line, I would then have to fit a line that would be taking that guy into consideration. So that was a 60 inch male that had a shoe size of 10 and that very likely could be that's five feet tall and that's possible but it could also have been a data entry error and who knows it may happen and so it may not matter at all so but with that piece of data I don't know it's reasonable to assume this is my output and then that is my regression equation and this is me interpreting them so you may want to pause to check all of these because I'm running out of time so I'm not going to sit here and go over each of them but uh, again that is a stronger correlation than we had with the female data and um, we come down here here is my oh let me go back make sure we got our prediction right uh, we'll go back in a minute so I actually reran it this is another bonus feature I reran that without that out a possible outlier um, notice how it looks much nicer um, in terms of uh, compact there and look at how much better my correlation is um, and it did change all of my other values, so it definitely had an impact. So my correlation went up. That's a big deal. And before this runs out, just make sure you got an answer of 
a predictive answer of 9.95 shoes.